No doubt about it. Uh, follow me at Rob Parker, MLBBro.com, where they cover and chronicle black and brown players, and they've been doing it a long, long time. And now he's got a lot of things cooking here. Sports Rap Radio, the first all-black sports radio uh, station in America. I mean, Rob's doing great things here. I know he's right now in Cincinnati. And then something else just happened with MLBBro.com. And, Rob, good morning. I want you to explain to the people what just happened with this site as you guys launched it, and it has been recognized by Major League Baseball. Yes, absolutely. How you guys making out? It was great time last night uh, in Birmingham. What a, what a scene that was. I was honored to be a part of that, to be able to see that firsthand, something that most people would have never believed would have happened, a major league game in a Negro League stadium, the oldest stadium in the country. It was pretty fantastic. And, yeah, and, and uh, as you were talking about, Major League Baseball uh, – has partnered with us, um, and that's a that's a great thing. They have monitored our sites for our site for a while, and uh, they know the work we're doing, all the energy and stuff we're putting in. So now there's a uh, a strong partnership between the two. It's great. No, no doubt about it. In the country's first all black sports talk radio station that you launched over the last couple months here. And it's great. My boy Montez is part of your uh, station over there, and I'm happy for Tez, uh, AM 1270 in Detroit. So you got a lot of things cooking here, Rob. And the Rickwood experience, um, I don't know. Uh, let's start here. Reggie Jackson, I'm sure you see the clip of Reggie Jackson. I'm watching it live, and this is after Barry Bonds was on the pregame set. I'm like, wow, Barry's on the pregame set. Baseball's finally embracing Barry Bonds. He's out there in public as he's honoring the great Willie Mays. It ain't Reggie Jackson. I don't think that they could really deny Barry Bonds when you consider yeah. that that's Willie Mays' godson. No I doubt. Just, I, I, I don't know how they could have done anything other than what they did, which was good. Which no, was good. It, it's great. It's great. We've been wanting Barry to get into a Hall of Fame for a long, long time, but it was good. They had packages with Barry. But then Reggie Jackson stole the show, and he talked about his experience, and he discussed his experience with the Birmingham A's and what he went through, and it really put this practice. I'm 41, Rob, and I'm black, and I understand what happened back in the day with slavery, but I never experienced it. And then yeah. when Reggie Jackson spoke, I couldn't imagine what they went through and how they survived during those times of being called the things they were called by not being allowed in hotel rooms or restaurants or, hey, you got to use the bathroom outside. I thought it was powerful. I thought it was authentic. I was It was raw. I can't recall ever listening to somebody sit down during a live sporting program and say the things that he said. And I thought it was inspirational. But it's something that I'm going to be playing for the rest of my life, uh, Rob. Yeah, I, I'm, there are always people who don't want to hear about the truth of stuff that went on and what life was like. And for people who have lived it and experienced it, they shouldn't have to whitewash it and make it like everything is cool and nothing happened and let's just turn the page. There's a reason why there were Negro Leagues, right? The Negro Leagues. There's a reason why baseball is uh, doing what they're doing and, and, and trying to make right all the bad things that went on. But these are things that happen. You, you can't ignore the history of the country and what took place. It was a very ugly time and bad situation. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a million years ago. That's what people got to understand, too. You know what I mean? And then yep. people will say, oh, well, that was the past or whatever. Well, we have some Negro League players who are still alive, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they lived it and experienced it. So the people who were doing the bad stuff and the abuse and all that, they're probably still alive, too. So let's just, like, let's not act like anybody who did the bad stuff is all gone. No, these people remember what went on, and we have to let everyone know so that it doesn't happen again. You know, it was bittersweet watching the celebration last night, Rob. And um, you see these legends and you see the passing of, of Willie Mays and guys like Hank Aaron and what they meant for the baseball community, but the black community as well. And I just look at around Major League Baseball today and, you know, Lamont Wade Jr., the Giants are trying to get a special exemption for him to be on the roster for the game yesterday. He's dealing with a hamstring injury right now. But uh, it was good to see him out in uniform regardless yesterday being an, an African-American player on the team. But I, I just came away from that, too. I was like, what's the problem? Like, what needs to happen for there to be more African-American players in today's league? Like, the homegrown guys, like, I was just, we were just honoring Millie, uh, Willie Mays all week long. He's probably the best player in the history of the game, a black man. And I just see the the where it is today 
when it comes to the white players. There's we have a lot of um, Japanese players. Obviously, we have the the Afro Dominican, Afro Venezuelan. We have all those, but the African American player. What needs to happen for that to get integrated more into these lineups? Well, it, there's a combination of things. Real quick, and I'm not going to bore everybody, but you got to you got to first admit uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, you know, uh, AAU has really diminished and hurt baseball in that a lot of these coaches who have basketball players, football players, refuse to allow them to play more than one sport. So they're asking kids to pick at a young age, which is absolutely ridiculous. All the great athletes have played multiple sports. So that's part of it. Baseball is a long road. It's a harder game to play. You know, you got to go to the minor leagues. They see guys go one year in uh, high school or whatever, and they can get into the NBA. So it's more attractive. Let's also admit that the black people aren't the number one minority anymore in this country. Can, uh, Hispanics have blown by black people as far as the number one minority with huge numbers. There's a lot of things working. Baseball about 20 years ago outsourced the jobs. They set up academies all over Latin America, right, so that they could get players, put them in dormitories, let them play ball every day, eight hours a day, feed them three meals, and not have to deal with agents and lawyers and paying big bonuses up front. So there's a lot of things that tilted the scale. But the, but baseball's done a good job. We follow all of these young players at MLBbro.com. There's a ton of young black players in the minor leagues now, and the tide is turning because they put more energy into it. So it's just a matter of time. Let's, let's be honest. The Cardinals started the season this year with three black players in their starting lineup. Two of them got sent down including Jordan Walker, but they did have three black players in their starting lineup when the season started. Talking to Rob Parker here, MLBbro.com. Check his site out. They cover black and brown players around the major leagues, even in the minor leagues. No doubt the odd couple, Chris Broussard of Fox Sports 1. It's got the first all-black sports radio station in this country as well, Sports Rap Radio, 1270 AM in Detroit. They're doing big things. Rob Parker's doing big things, and he was down there at Rickwood Field. But Willie Mays, um, what do you know? About, what do you, did you ever meet Willie Mays? What was that like meeting Willie Mays? Because the stories of just, especially in this market, the, I haven't heard one bad thing about Willie. Everybody unequivocally says he's the greatest player we've ever seen. The style, the grace, the swagger, the power, the speed, the first real true five tool player. What was your interactions with Willie? If you had one, uh, Rob? Yeah, I, I met him when he was, uh, when I was 23 years old, writing for the daily news in New York and Willie Mays, was at a press conference, it was around the All-Star time, and I got a chance, they sent me down and said, hey, we want you to interview Willie Mays, and can you imagine that, a 23-year-old wow. sports writer going up to a legendary and asking him questions in an interview, so I do remember that. He was cool, cordial, you know, no incident, no, no treat me badly or anything like that, so it was definitely something that I always remember, and, uh, you know, Willie Mays, absolutely uh, was a five-tool player, great player. And, and when you could even think about him missing two years early in his career for the military, what he could have done. I think, I, you know, I had this debate on uh, MLB Network with Brian Kennedy the other day, and this is no disrespect because I think mo a lot of people pick Willie Mays the all-time, all-around, you know, best player ever. Right. But I still think Hank Aaron gets a, a raw deal, yeah. and people don't understand – like, his offensive numbers are just second to nobody. Total bases. Uh, he averaged 100. He played 23 years. He has 2,300 RBIs. That's unheard of when you think about, you know, the start of your career and the end. You know what I mean? Right, Where you could right. easily fall off the last four or five years to average 100 RBIs in 23 major league seasons. He made the most all-star games, more than Willie Mays made 25 all-star games. I mean, the home runs, you take away Hank Aaron's 755 home runs, and guess what? He has, still has 3,000 hits. Yeah. Each number separately gets you in the Hall of Fame. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yep. like he, 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 was, he was a tremendous player, and that's not to take anything away from Willie Mays because Willie Mays' speed, power, you know, hit for average, 301 lifetime average, just two of the greatest players, and they both played in the Negro League 
which tells you all you need to know about that league. It, well, it's funny, Rob, you bring up Hank Aaron because yesterday we were doing our all-time starting nine uh, and we were doing our pitcher. Pitcher was Bob Gibson. We had Mays, Bonds in the outfield. Who else did we have, Spadoni, in that outfield? Who else did we have? It. But, but the, the, the point is... We, Frank I forgot who we had. I think it was Frank Robinson who yeah. won an MVP in both leagues, the American League and the National League. But <laughs> we didn't even have Hank Aaron on the team. And I, I was into the show. I said, "We're not even going to get Hank Aaron, the homer king, before Barry Bonds on the on this team." And it's, to it, your that's, point, that's, that's he is underrated. Point. To your point, he has he is, been underrated. He has been underrated. I don't know why. And then he wasn't a stiff in the outfield. He had three gold gloves early in his career. Used to steal bases. I don't even – he's a model of consistency, batted 305, lifetime. His numbers are through the roof. The total bases? Seriously. Yeah. I yeah. mean, total bases. Shatter. Somebody go do your go do your research. Google it. It ain't even close. He's he's a, the leader in total bases in the history of baseball. Not even close. So now that Willie and obviously Hank, they've passed on – who is the greatest player right now? The greatest player that is still with us today is it Barry Bonds? Is Without it, question, is it, yeah, it, it's, it's it's Barry Bonds, and everybody knows it. And you know, it's unfortunate. I voted for him all ten years. He was on the ballot. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm I'm one of these voters. It's not my job to be baseball's police. He was never. I'm not naive. I know they were using it, okay, but he was never suspended. He was ne- he never tested positive, and I don't think because if his numbers are going to count according to baseball, then that's what I voted on. Other guys who got suspended, A. Rod and and you know Manny Ramirez or whatever, I could see where people could say, okay, I'm not going to vote for them because they actually got penalties during their playing careers. But that was not the case with Bonds, so I always voted for him. I think he's the greatest player I ever saw play. Yeah, yeah, same here, same here. Barry, it was good to see Barry at Rickwood, and obviously they're going to have celebrations here at Oracle Park when the Giants get back home. Not a good baseball team right now, Rob. Got two sturdy pitchers. Ugh. Keaton Wynn can't give you three. It feels like we're back in 2023 again when we're watching the San Francisco Giants here. But I do want to get you, since we got you on the line, and Rickwood, we're going to continue to talk about what happened yesterday in Birmingham, Alabama. It teared me up, Rob. It really did. Um, seeing all those Negro League players get their due, get their shine, the smiles on their faces of being honored yesterday, Rickwood. That memory will last forever. But I do want to, since we got you on the line, you are a three. We call you a three, uh, a three tool player here on the show. You know your hoops, you know your football, you know your baseball, basketball. My boy over here is a Laker fan. Uh. JJ Reddick is the head coach of the LA Lakers. Really? Is he going to podcast after the first quarter? I mean, what do you think about the move? It's a terrible hire, and it tells you that the Lakers are not in the business of winning. It's just a bad hire. In, in, Le, in LeBron's waning years of trying to win, you're going to put a novice as a head coach. That could be a total disaster. I think J.J. Redick could wind up being Jeff Saturday all over again. It's wow. a bad move, and I don't understand – why they would go that route to, uh, and especially it undermines the locker room with, with LeBron's podcast partner and how teammates are supposed to feel. Is, this, is JJ saying this or is LeBron saying this? It's just a bad look, and I think it could wind up blowing, in their, blowing up in their face. I just don't understand. The Lakers aren't serious. They're, they're run literally like a mom-and-pop store. Uh, with Jeannie Bust and, and the way that things go down. I just cannot imagine a franchise of that ilk going to hire a, a novice and they're trying to say, well, he could be like Pat Riley, who was a TV guy. But that, that team that Pat Riley took over was unbelievable already and had already won a championship. You know what I mean? Yep. Before Riley took over, it's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. People try to make that, make that connection. It's not the same. Yeah, but Rob, but think about all the podcasts they can do at halftime in the locker room. We get some unseen footage. Come on, man. Got to think about the you'll positives. Be, you'll be talking about it on the odd couple. <laughs> you already know. We, we stir a will. Hey, Chris and I don't agree on a lot of stuff, but we agree on this one. I'll tell you that. Bad hire. <laughs> Real quick, Clay Thompson. I know you had some thoughts on Clay Thompson. Uh, the Warriors have a chance right now to negotiate with Clay Thompson. 
I don't know if the Malik Monk contract he got with the Sacramento Kings is going to impact Clay Thompson at all. We're all under the assumption Malik Monk was going to break the bank, get about $30 million per from the team like the Orlando Magic. He goes back to Sacramento for under $19 million per season. Kind of a shocking upset there for the Sacramento Kings and for everybody. What does it mean for Clay Thompson? And do you see Clay Thompson being back with the Golden State Warriors when next season tips off? I mean, they offered him, what, $24 million for uh, two years, 48, right? Yep. I mean, uh, sound like a great deal for me. I just thought it was childish that he scrubbed the Warriors off of his social and all that. I said on the odd couple that uh, the Warriors should block him on social media. <laughs> That's what I would have done. And just block him and be like, okay, you want to play that game. Okay. It's just sad to see that guy, a guy who won four championships with an organization who's so – a part of the landscape and the fabric of that organization and city would act that childish to me, considering that they paid him and he's been injured. And last year, the last time we saw Clay Thompson, he was going 0 for 10 from the field, 0 for 6 from 3, and not looking pretty doing it. I just, I think it's childish. So uh, Stephen Curry's up for an extension right now, Rob, with the Golden State Warriors. Do you think he should sign one? Should he sign one or should the Warriors want to sign one? Oh. Two different questions. Two different the questions. Warriors would definitely want him to sign yeah, one. But, do you think, but I think uh, you're alluding you, to Steph Curry maybe shouldn't sign it. I, I'm not, I don't know where Steph's going. He's not going anywhere. The money that they're paying him, the cabbage, where is he going? Okay. He's going to wind up staying there. They want him to be there. Teams like this, I'm going to tell you this. Go back to the old Boston Celtics with Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and Kevin McHale. They didn't trade any of those guys. They kept all of them. And go look at the 19, 20-year drought they had by holding on to guys too long. You can't fall in love with the past. This, this thing, this ship has sailed big time. The Nina, the Penta, and the Santa Maria, and <laughs> the Warriors have all sailed, okay? Let it go. Break it up. You've got to do something different. That's us. Awesome. I, I need <laughs> Steph Curry here. I don't know about a pregame show. We go an hour, Rob. Without Steph Curry, I don't know how much content yeah, we can Draymond pull Draymond Green. Uh, yeah, Draymond Green. There you go. Draymond Green. There. Shut you talking to me. Uh, well, Rob. Well, without uh, Steph Curry, they would put your uh, pregame show on Ballys, and then we'd be off the air anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, thank God we're not part of Ballys. We're no, part of an NBC <laughs> umbrella. Thank <laughs> the heavens for that, Rob. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, Rob, always good catching up. Uh, with you. I'm glad you got to experience that. I'm not going to lie. I had some regret of not, not going down to Rickwood Field. Should have maybe thought more into it about what happened yesterday in Birmingham, Alabama. The field looked great. The Negro Leaguers, man, the current living Negro Leaguers, they got their due. They got their shine, and we honored the great Willie Mays and got to see it all. Thanks for sharing your experience with us here on the Morning Ross on 95.7 Game. Thanks, Rob. Man, always, guys. You know, anytime, hit me up. And again, there's a couple things I've been to in life. I was at the Million Man March. In Washington, D.C., I remember making sure I got off the plane. I was covering a football game. I was covering a Raiders game. Flew back, changed my ticket to stop off in D.C. for that. And this will rank up there with with that. Wow. Like a thing that I really, really wanted to be at. And it turned out to be everything I thought it would be. And it was awesome. Awesome stuff, Rob. Safe travels to you, brother. Talk to you soon. Okay, you t you guys too. Thank you, buddy. Thank Anytime. You. Thanks, Anytime. Man. Rob Parker, man, doing great things great. out there. MLBbro.com is now partnered with Major League Baseball as they chronicle all the black and brown players in the majors and the minors. Um, also, it's all sports talk radio, all black sports talk radio in Detroit, 12, 1270 a.m. to give minorities an opportunity to spit on the air. Rob Parker, man. I can't get enough of the accent, too. Like the I Lakers are not in the business of winning. <laughs>